Hi, this is Natalie Kolbeck and I'm having Mary Beth Shaw with me today who is part of my book Artful Adventures in Mixed Media. I'm very excited that she's part of my book and we want to talk a little bit. Hi Mary Beth, how are you? Hi Nat, how are you? Good, it's getting spring so everything gets better now, right? Yeah, definitely. The sun is shining. Yay! <laughs> So, um, Mary Beth Shaw is the owner of Stencil Girl Products, for you, uh, those of you who don't know her. Um, she has amazing stencils out there, but besides that, she also makes amazing artwork. I really love her uh, artwork, and that's why she is included in my book, and she is uh, very uh, influenced by things around her, so I do think so, but we will find out in this interview. So... Uh, Mary Beth, tell us a little bit about yourself and your artwork. Okay, thanks, Nat. Uh, first of all, thank you for asking me to be in the book. I can't wait to see it. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> now I can't wait to get my hands on it. I'm very excited. Well, um, yes, I am a mixed media painter is what I normally call myself. I do paint with acrylics. But I like to involve collage and, um, you know, I love supplies like everybody else. So a lot of other things work them work their way into my paintings, too. And I started painting back in 2000. So I've been doing it for like 17 years now. I mean, of course, when I was a kid, I did a lot of artful things, too. But I just became a full-time painter in 2000 and um, started the stencil company in 2010. And it's all good. I just have been blessed to, you know, be able to actually find success as an artist. It's been an amazing journey. Yeah, and um, you just, uh, I think you have an upcoming exhibition or something, um, we can talk about it later too, but you are uh, incorporating some cold wax, right? Yes, I just learned how to work in um, oil paint and cold wax, nice. and then, so this, I'm part of this group called the Wax Collective, and we have a show opening in June that is all work created either with encaustic or with oil and cold wax. So you always on the lookout for new supplies that you can incorporate in your artwork? Yes, and sometimes I have to put on blinders though because it gets overwhelming. Yeah, encaustic was that way. I avoided it for a very long time because I thought I am going to like this way too much and Okay, so um I have a question for you. So my book is called Artful Adventures in Mixed Media. And so let's pretend you had no obstacle so money no no time is no obstacle money is no obstacle nothing is an obstacle and you could go to any artful adventure tomorrow what would that be oh my gosh well i would of course want a i would want a home on the water so that I could watch the waves coming in every morning and I could walk along the ocean because I'm very inspired by the water for hmm. some reason. I don't know. Actually, I'm very inspired by nature in general. So I would want to be in a home by the water with all of my studio supplies there too, of course, because they could be magically transported there. Yes. And then I would also be able to have all of my animals there with me. <laughs> and um, but then I think if ideally, then if it was in some place where there was a lot of color inspiration, like I imagine I've always wanted to go to India and uh, see like all of the colors and the fabrics and the saris and the weaving of the fabrics and the spices and all of that. So if that was somehow involved too, and I could maybe venture out into the town, but then also go back to my completely remote, gorgeous home by the water, that would all be perfect. That sounds amazing. All the time. I know. <laughs> I've never been to India either. It's on my list too. I want to see it just because also the colors and it's just so inspiring when you just see it on TV or photos and there's something about it, right? That makes you really... I know, I know. And you always see those pictures of like all the spices. And yeah. Things. 
It's like everything just looks like it's intensely colored. And I, I do use a lot of color in my work. And that would be really inspirational for me. Actually, but, I kind of see that, too. If I think about now, when I think of like piles of spices, you do use a lot of um, earthy um, colors, too, right? You use like... I do, yeah. Like neutral or must like mustard is a weird name for that, but like you know what I mean, like this oak no, color. But you're thinking like mustard, paprika, saffron, and those colors. You know, I love those colors, and um, and that's why I always think of them as I. I remember when I was in college, I had a poster at India in my college dorm room. I mean, how weird is that? You know, this little girl from the Midwest. Like, I'm really gonna go to India. <laughs> But I'm just very inspired by the colors, and I think that that would be really cool. But I have this juxtaposition that a lot of artists have in my personality where I I either go between wanting complete solitude or I want, like, an urban mm -hmm. city. So I almost feel like I have a split personality. So that's why in my perfect adventure, I would have this solitary location on the beach but it would be next to this really cool urban city <laughs> right oh I totally get that because I always see right now there's a lot of like people posting about like are you an introvert or an extrovert and I'm kind of like thinking I think I might be both because there are times where I'm like I want people around me and I love the buzz and I love to socialize and then I come home and I'm almost like a hermit and I don't want to talk and I don't answer the phone and I don't want to, you know, I, I just want to be in my little cave and do nothing. So is that I the same way? I'm exactly the same way and I totally get that. I can go out and be surrounded by my students or my fellow artists and just in museums and on the street and inspired by everything or crawl back into my hole. You know? right, exactly. <laughs> it's yeah, funny. No, totally get that. And so many artists, I think, I, I think maybe that um, as artists, we feel things very intensely a lot of, um, and with all of our senses generally. So our eyes, our nose, everything. Mm. And it's almost sensory overload, and then we have to go back inside and process for a while. Or at least for me, that's kind of how it works. Yeah, that's a good that's a good um, that's a good explanation for that. Um, because is that that well, that was another question that I had, and it's almost like that. Do you think so? So you came also to art um, in a different way, just like me. Uh, you worked for I think an insurance company, right? I, yes. Uh huh. And then you found art later in life, or at least like making art. So um, do you think that you look at art, or, if, or do you think you look at the world differently ever since you changed your career and you're now an artist? Yes, definitely. I think I did a little bit before, but definitely I'm, I'm whole hog that way now. I mean, because I... I can see inspiration in everything, you know, and I can be walking along and take a picture of, you know, the stain that the leaves left on mm -hmm. the sidewalk after the rain or something like that, you know, and people look at you like you're just a little bit, you know, cuckoo. And, um, you know, and I don't think I was so much that way when I was in the insurance business. I think that I didn't allow the time. Right. For one, you know, and I, I wasn't tuned in. Um, to all of my senses, but yeah. Is that your I, main um, way to collect your inspiration points that you take photos of things along the I way? I photos of things, and um, I always tear things out of magazines. And, you know, back in the day, before Pinterest, I had, I would keep journals, paper journals of just things that I would clip out. And they would be a lot like the Pinterest folders we keep today, or like the ones I keep, because I have, on Pinterest, I have a folder for color. Mm -hmm. color. That's just colors I like, combinations of colors I like, or something about it, I put it in there. And then I have compositions. So oh, yeah. these are like compositions that I think are interesting or worthy of exploring or other artists I want to look at more but I used to keep all that in paper before Pinterest I had journals of those things too so I've always been very organized about keeping track of the stuff that I like mm -hmm. either but, with 
goes or tearing it out or like on the computer today. Do you find inspiration in like reading something too or is that either it's like more visual like a picture or? Um, I would say more visually although sometimes it reading does inspire me too. Mm -hmm. it, you, some books are very impactful and I just keep thinking about them and actually since I have a degree in journalism, so mm. I think words are more inspiring to me maybe than the average person. I don't know. And, um, you know, actually, I'd love to get back to this. I used to keep a separate journal of just words mm -hmm. and phrases and things that, um, that I would hear, like on the bus or mm -hmm. that I'd see and I'd jot it down. And I loved keeping track, track of those things. They always tend to... They would summon up a visual image, even though it was coming from words. And exactly, I, yeah. I know yeah, what you mean. Go with that. I would like to get back to that again. Because it kind of like, I do I do love to read too. And then sometimes you read something and it gets this whole like locomotive into motion. And then other things that you collected as inspiration, they kind of like pop up all of a sudden. And you're like, actually that just reminded me of something that I saw and that was very colorful and that could transport that message that I just read in words or like, I love yeah. how these things kind of like then just come together and they make this like whole new dish. <laughs> if you would like a recipe of something new, right? Yes, exactly. And, um, you know, my first book, Flavor for Mixed Media, I, it was about that idea, about, like, kind of comparing and contrasting art making to, like, food making or recipes. Oh, yeah. Because I think it's so much the same. And when I teach, sometimes I'll tell my students that, you know, sure, I might introduce 20 different products ranging from markers to paint to pencils to who knows what. But it's like a spice rack. It doesn't mm -hmm. mean you every single one of them and every single piece of art you know it's just like cooking you just take a little dab of this a little dab of that you know and um right that's yeah. like how you can get inspiration from so many places right yeah it's amazing right i, I always like so, and it, i think that it opens us also if if we kind of understand that it opens us to things that we usually don't really like to do <laughs> Like I just told uh, Jimmy Leslie in an interview that I like jazz, but I don't like free jazz. And my husband is a huge free jazz, uh, you know, fan. And one time he was like, oh, let's 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 watch this documentary about jazz. And I was like, oh, my God, kill me now. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, yeah, you know, let, hmm? did you fall asleep? No, I actually was like kind of like, OK, let's be open to this. And then. A lot of the things that were sad about jazz, they kind of like resonated with me because you can also, uh, you know, put them into something that's sad about art. Like how, you know, yeah. if you have a jam ses session and different um, musicians, um, they know how to play their instrument, but they haven't played together before. But now they play together and something mm -hmm. new comes out of that. And I'm like, that's kind of like you, you have to figure out how your art supplies work together right so I had all these like ideas while I was like listen to it and I actually enjoyed it I mean I don't know if I would watch it again but <laughs> no, as you're talking I'm just like okay I gotta go now because I got an idea <laughs> I'm just like as I was listening to you talk about that in my mind I was seeing a painting that was kind of like replicating all those different conversations mm -hmm instruments you know yeah. different lines and threads and music that are flowing through that are going on simultaneously but they're creating one and um i have done oh my gosh i can't tell you how many series i've done that it's about that idea the idea from one comes many mm -hmm. or from um, one i did a solo show in a gallery in 2008 and the name of the show was one and it was about that whole concept and um I, I don't know i find that very fascinating and i hadn't thought about it in respect to jazz until you said that and i was like oh wow yeah yeah i mean i think it's like um i also saw the um there was this exhibition of matisse cut out 
um, in at MoMA, and uh, he did this book. Uh, I think it is called Jazz. Don't quote me on that. You know, I think it is. Right? I think you're uh -huh. And he did this cutouts and it was like someone with a trumpet, but it was like this abstract kind of shapes and, and like colors, of course, and the way how he was seeing that. And I was like, it was so fascinating, right? It's like this, yeah, there's a lot in music that can, or Kandinsky did a lot of like paintings that were highly, he, he tried to uh, portrait the composition in colors and forms, which is kind of like, you know. <laughs> But it's like, that's why, why I'm like, yeah, if we open ourselves to maybe some things that are usually not that interesting uh, and try to see it in a different way, then that can open us up to some really, really cool new ideas, right? Yes. I, no, I think it's totally true. And it, I mean, you could just apply it to anything, really, because I think if you do explore or... Um, you know, visually look at something over and over the same thing, it does become interesting. You see mm -hmm. the nuances that you might not see, you know, all the time. And it is really fascinating. I think that's what I love about being an abstract painter. Mm -hmm. I so I love the idea of depicting things in abstract ways. And, um, and uh, for me, it's just so challenging, you know. Mm -hmm. Which is challenge. actually interesting. So in your artwork, you do you do a lot of like very abstract. Um, mo actually, I've, I would think almost a hundred percent is abstract mm -hmm. what you do. But then you have a stencil company. I know. Go figure, right? Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, yes, you do like shapes and everything that are like used in your artwork, of course, in an abstract way. But it's kind of. It's that's kind of interesting, actually. It never occurred to me. I know, and, and that's a different thing too, because there's that part of my brain that I love pattern. Yeah, you know, pattern. Oh my god, I just love it. And um, and so when I first started the stencil company, that the stencils were all about pattern, mm -hmm. and it until I started inviting different designers that more realistic things started coming into the mix too, because not everybody just wants pattern stencils, but, um, right. Yeah. Yeah. But you yeah. have this, um, really cool hashtag where that you use on your Instagram, uh, account too. And it's called, I see stencils everywhere. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I do. <laughs> you do, right? Gosh, it's crazy. Well, um, you know, because we were talking about it before we came on there, but yesterday I, I like broke a bone in my foot. Well, so I was laying on the floor in my studio on the, I have like this two story studio. It could be an apartment, you know, if you were willing to live without insulation in all seasons. But anyway, because it's cold and hot and all mm -hmm. that. But anyway, I was laying on the floor and I had my foot propped up and I was looking at the ceiling and I was like, my God, I've never looked at the ceiling before from down here. And there were like two patterns up on the ceiling that I liked. And I'm just, and I'm just like, seriously, what is wrong with you? you know? But that's what I find so, that's, that's what I find so uh, amazing. And that's a part of my book is about um, that there's hardly ever this like, you know, artists that just like inspiration just strikes like an like a like a light bulb yes you la laid on the floor but you're also open and receptive to influences because you know if you if you look and you just let your mind wander a little bit then that can spark an inspiration so I yeah and I for me it's always been that way since I kind of opened the floodgates to art you know mm -hmm. I've taken some classes when um, when we lived in California I took some classes some um, college level art classes mm -hmm. and I remember being there in class and a couple of the students were well I just don't know what to paint and I just don't have any inspiration and I'm thinking God my problems just the opposite. <laughs> I'm like, okay, call me the inspiration girl then because <laughs> everything inspires me and it's almost it's almost a curse in a way, you know. Yeah, yeah. Because it's like sometimes you're like, I don't know where to start even like and I think the other <laughs> thing is like you don't 
you don't explore something in depth. That's I think that's one thing where I sometimes feel that's my besides maybe the urban paintings, but I'm very like I jump from one thing in in the other because I'm like, oh, and this is cool, and I should do this and this and this. But I mm -hmm. never really, besides maybe the urban paintings, I never really explore one thing mm -hmm. more in depth and say, oh, this is something that I want to take another notch further and another notch further, um, which I think, in in a way, I I wish we were Picasso. <laughs> We aren't, I know, but I know. But he did the same thing, kind of. Like he if you did look, the same thing. He jumped around in so many different mediums and so forth. And um, I saw um, we saw this show at MoMA a long, long time ago, Picasso and portraiture, ah. and it was all the portraits that he did throughout his life. And they were the. Um, he started out, you know, when he was young with his parents and. Right teachers and things like that but then he would go through his life and do portraits of everyone and some of them were so unbelievably beautiful that you wouldn't even have recognized them as Picasso necessarily I mean they were classic portraits and you know not the Dora Mar face you know right. but classic and um it just blew my mind you know that he was really all over the place like that and right. so I've Thought. Well, it must be okay for me too. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, we can do it. <laughs> so speaking of the um, speaking of artwork, you did this amazing piece of artwork, which I will blend into the um, interview. If you want to see it uh, bigger and longer, you should get the book. <laughs> yeah. But, um, you did this awesome um, piece. It's called Segmented, I think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> tell us a little bit about it what was it inspired by do you remember I know it's a long time ago <laughs> yeah I um well I think it was uh probably a Diebenkorn inspiration wasn't it yeah I have been inspired by um Diebenkorn for many years since we lived in California and um I could walk to the museums from our home and um I just I could stand and look at his paintings forever and the way he divides up space mm. and makes it interesting and within every space. But, and, and then really kind of like what we were talking about before, like you have all these segments that are all interesting in and of themselves, but then you put them all together and it's interesting. It's a whole piece too. And I just am very intrigued by achieving that in work and playing with some different colors that, um, that was a new palette for me. Mm -hmm. And they were just, um, I was using some purples and yeah. I had never done that before. And I just, that was very different for me. And I had a lot of fun making that. Yeah, I love it a lot. You also did a second piece, which, didn't make it into the book because they shortened my book, but I'm going to show that one too. Okay. Um, it's the um, it's called the Forest of the Trees, and that comes back to what you said that there you are very um, inspired by nature, right? Uh, yes, yes. It's actually the forest or the trees. Oh, sorry. No, that's okay. It's all right. It's the forest or the trees because it was about that idea of you know, you're seeing the forest or the trees, you know what I mean, individually or as a whole, again, it crops up in my work over and over. But that piece started with a bit of collage that was from one of my photos of trees. And then I created trees on top of trees ah. and pretty realistic for me, although they're abstracted. But um, I actually did two of those paintings that kind of stood together and, um, and I still have the one of them. I, I kind of like it. It's a painting. It's very, I, I love it a lot. It's very, it, it's like, I want to see it in person too. Both yeah. of them actually. Um, because I th I'm thinking it's like 24 inches tall by 18 wide, I think. So it's wow. a decent size. But um, yeah, in the image I used, I actually even used the Thermofax creating that and did some tree imagery on there too, plus some stencils and mm -hmm. um Drips and so forth that had tree looks, you know. Look, you like couldn't, tree. you wouldn't be able to tell when you look at the painting that there is a stencil actually involved, which is pretty amazing. 
Like, I like <laughs> and, that. And then my assistant always gets so mad at me when I'm doing my penny. She's like, well, there isn't a stencil in there. And I'm like, well, there is. I'm sure there's one somewhere. <laughs> you, know? but you can't ever tell because I just, I like to use them as just, for me, the stencils are simply like using a brush or a mm. marker or anything else. They're just a tool. Right. They're a tool to move me to the next level. So... Yeah, yeah, I like that too. I mean, I like that when I like to use them as they are, but I also like th th those are not the ones that you would like put out to say this is not going to sell the stencil to be honest, right? Because you're like you can't even see the stencil <laughs> in the artwork, but I use I use a lot of my stencils in my urban paintings too, but you would never be able to kind of like figure that out unless I kind of tell you, you know. Yeah, right. Because they can create texture and a depth of a, of a look that, right. um, at least for my painting ability, I couldn't create that on my own. Mm -hmm. You know, I rely on a stencil to help me get to that. And um, because I just don't think I'm any sort of a realistic painter in that regard, you know. Or they also help you just to get fervor, like they solve one problem that helps yeah. you then to kind of like move on in your painting instead of trying to figure that out and then getting like upset about the whole the whole process, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. I love your new stencils, the ones named after all the different cities. Oh, oh my you. God, those are like... <laughs> Just pattern to the max. They're fantastic. Thank you for having me and having the opportunity to have them out there, which is, you know, pretty amazing for an artist, too. That's why I love Stencil Girl, too. It's like, it's an amazing opportunity, and it's wonderful to work with you guys. So, thanks. <laughs> Should have been said, too. So, now it's on video. Here you go. <laughs> I know, right? We're getting all these plugs in. Wow. <laughs> but, but, I mean, seriously, it's like... Yes, I love all of our stencils, but I am particularly drawn to these recent pattern ones that you did. I just really like them a lot. Oh, thank They're you. Very... Yeah. So um, that was a really cool conversation. I really liked a lot, and I could do more. I look forward to seeing you soon in Ohio where uh, I'm teaching, yeah. and you're uh, there with Stencil Girl products. But before I let you go, is there anything uh -huh. you would like to add? Like, are there classes, books, workshops, anything you want to throw out there for our audience? Yeah, um, I think most of the things I'm doing are almost sold out. Um, I'm teaching at Art Unraveled in August, and I think there's just a couple seats left for that. And then Where I'm is teaching, that? Uh, that's in Phoenix, Arizona. Mm -hmm. And I'm teaching a two-day art journal class. And then in July, I'm teaching on Whidbey Island with Pam Carricker. And we're teaching a three-day class. And I think that's just got a couple more seats, too. But anyway. Nice. Um, and then you have your exhibition. What? You have your exhibition, too, right? Oh, yeah. In June. I'll probably put some photos up on that. I'm excited about that. Yes. Yeah. Very cool. We're on the theme of triangles. And... Um, it was a very, very interesting, I just became obsessed with triangles and I, you know, used to be obsessed with circles and squares, of course, I've always been obsessed with, but triangles were new for me and I just couldn't get enough of them. And in fact, I designed my own special stencils to use that I'm going to bring out to the world now, but, um, but this is because I have a laser in my basement. I can do this. <laughs> make my own stencils for my own work and um anyway then once I started trying to figure out what this series was about it was fascinating to me because I found that tri a triangle is the strongest shape first of all mm -hmm. you know if you get like the pyramids and triangles they're very strong mm -hmm. and also there's this whole theory that um that triangles and triangulation can be a, a political thing. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh my gosh, after such a politically charged time, mm -hmm. history, it's so interesting that I picked that to work with when hmm. I didn't even know that that, I mean, it's just, to me, it's an example of how we need art. Right, and, yeah. Uh, kind of express ourselves even if we don't even realize we're expressing right. ourselves right. it was a fascinating realization for so me so what's coming after circles and triangles what's next now 
I don't know. I'm going to have to find a new shape. <laughs> <laughs> Parallelograms or I don't even know what that's. Right, right. Octagons maybe. I don't know. I, you know, it's kind of like my whole artistic career. I feel like these same things recur, recur, you know, trees, rocks, and then mm. shapes, these shapes. And, um, let me just say one more thing real quick. Um, when I took this cold wax class, uh, oil and cold wax class with Lisa Pressman, and I was making this one shape over and over, and she, when you take a class with her, you get like this little 30-minute one-on-one nice. consultation, which was fantastic. And she kept looking at that shape, and she said, you've got something going on there in that shape. I think they're, it just reminds me of trees, which is interesting, because I'm almost always using trees. And then it just hit me. I'm like, oh! <gasps> Their roots, ah, they free roots. I'm pretty sure of it. So that was kind of like an aha moment, and that I haven't really had a chance to explore it, you know, to the depth that I'd like because I was working on these triangles. But roots might be next. That sounds cool. Actually, one more thing about the triangles. It's interesting that you say that. I'm teaching this class in Ohio, um, which is in inspired by artists um, that you would find along the way on one of the roads of their Oriental Express because that's the theme of their Art Escape event in Ohio. Oh. So, uh, and one of the artists that I will talk about in one on that class um, is, um, is Klimt. And yeah. I was like looking at his, uh, some of his paintings and when I made this, the sample, uh, I saw, you know, he uses a lot of shapes and one of them is actually uh, triangles. And then I was yeah. like, tri like incorporating that in an art journal page. And it's funny because I never use, I really never use triangles, but it started to grow on me while I was doing it. At first I was, you know, very simple, like very, just like drawing it uh, and repeating it. And then I was like, hmm, actually this is kind of fun, you know? <laughs> I know. It's really weird when you explore Klimt's work, too, because I taught a class a long time ago at Squam inspired by Klimt, mm -hmm. and um, it's like he was like a great doodle master, yeah. and the patterns that he would create in his paintings, the intricacy of the pattern work is so fascinating to me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. See, the number one that can get you inspired and going. So now everyone go and look at Klimt right. and do right. something with triangles too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so, so much, Mary Beth. That was amazing. And um, yeah, see you in two weeks. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I look forward to it. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>